Hello everyone, this is Bradley Scarf Piano presenting my input to Wim's whole beat challenge, since he did say he would be reserving spots for anti-double beaters, which is what I am. So, here is my input. I am a student studying at the Leeds Conservatoire in the UK. I am entering my first year in September, and I am strongly against Wim's double beat theory. I have been following Wim Sutton for at least, I think, three years, and I was vocal against double beats since its inception. However, I was banned around the time of the release of the Hammer Clavia, specifically around the videos where Wim refers to Beethoven smiling down upon him, since I pointed out that I believe that was incredibly arrogant. That was when I started becoming more vocal, and I was swiftly banned after that. And I currently still am, and I would request to be unbanned because of this video I'm offering a sort of olive branch to try and get a proper discussion going. Especially since if this features in Wim's video, there will be people in the in his comment section discussing my performances. I decided to participate because Wim said he would be willing to take questions I have, and I do have a few. So when Wim shows this video, I request after each question I make to pause and answer it as clearly as he can in full, in one place, and to not reflect to other videos or buried comment chains. With my submission, I decided to run a proper experiment, so I decided to record the piece three times. Once with Clara Schumann's double beat tempo, once with Robert's double beat tempo, and once with my own tempo. And I shall go over each one after having played it to you. So to start with, I'm going to start with Clara Schumann's tempo, which was of course quarter note 80. With this performance of Clara Schumann's tempo, I noticed that I immediately sped up. Because for me, it's far, far too slow. I struggled mentally to collect the phrases together. 
And so I believe it doesn't work in the slightest in that tempo. There's no sense for it to be in that tempo. The climax of the, speed, the, climax of the piece lacks the punch that it def desperately needs because it's the dissonance that you usually, usually skated over and resolved relatively quickly is held on to for too long. It doesn't feel right. However, due to the slight increase in speed I gave it, it's sort of unfair for me to stick too long on that since it wasn't a true Clara Schumann speed. Next up is Robert's t interpretation. With this version, I feel if that was truly Robert's interpretation, there would have been no need for Clara to change the tempo. It works reasonably well and it phrases nicely with obvious indicators to crescendo and rubato. I'd have to say the temptation to speed up in particular points is very, very evident, which you will hopefully hear in my next interpretation. However, Robert Clara did claim that Robert's metronome ran quick. Uh, ran slow, which may explain the very fast metronome markings here and in numerous other pieces. Again, I did speed up slightly towards the climax, but that's my natural desire for that climax to be a certain way, which you will hopefully hear in the next interpretation, which is my own.
this, that was how I would play that piece at a concert if I was to play it. And I personally think I take a lot of inspiration from Horowitz on that piece. At my tempo, I feel like the piece is breathing more, it's flowing, it feels more natural to me, at least. I play freely with the tempo in these sorts of pieces in accordance to how I believe it should be played and how piano rolls at the time were also played. They played around with tempo a lot. And they have very frequent fluctuations in tempo, which is why I slow down and speed up and change and I arpeggiated chords partially because the chords are very, very large. I slow down a lot towards the end and apply far more rotando than I do in the other performances because it simply fits more. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't fit so much if the other performances are massively slowed down. So I hope you did appreciate listening to those performances. I hope you got a fair bit out of them to my perspective on how I play music. But now, of course, I do have my own questions. So question number one, what do you think of the claim that your own biases for slower tempi has partially blinded you to other interpretations of the sources and the facts? What do you make of the section in Cherny's Opus 500 where he explicitly mentions that an adagio in 4-4 with a metronome mark of 8th note to the 60 would specifically have 8 ticks per bar, alongside an allegro in 3-4 time with dotted half notes only having one tick per bar. Who was the first person to document single beat metronome usage? I'm not talking about who was the first person to use single beat speeds, but explicitly document that one tick equals one beat on the metronome. Where exactly did that happen? Where is that definitive turning point? Because if your theory is correct, there would be one. And why are the timings of Sir George Smart, who met Beethoven and confirmed the tempi that he wanted, specifically by him playing all the main themes of the symphonies in front of him, consistent with the speeds we use today, if not slightly faster. Do you believe in the existence of the metrical second, despite there being no evidence in mathematics or physics, of which I've studied, that it ever existed? Do you believe that the aria of Zitternacht from the Magic Flute is playable at double beat markings, considering the music itself is already incredibly long phrases in its natural normal tempo which we play it today? some of which contain the seven, over seven seconds of very loud, very fast scalic runs, which are very difficult at a very much lower tempo. And I have had a soprano friend try it, and she said it's illogical at best or impossible at worst. What do you make of the numerous reports where the magic flute were played as fast as possible? What are your thoughts on the claim that Cherny said prestissimo means as fast as possible? Another one, do you acknowledge that you may have made any mistakes con concerning your methodology? Do you regret banning or allowing the banning of any musicians or commenters on your channel, despite the majority simply posting counter-arguments, including my own comments? And finally, have you read the document compiled by Fafner, which assesses over 100 examples of historical timings, all of which conclusively show double beat to be incorrect? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.